Hey guys, welcome to week one. Uh, we are going to get started. Short reading assignment this week um, for chapter 30. Uh, it is going to get longer, so make sure you keep up on these. This week you are responsible for reading pages 843, pretty much, to 853. So about 10 pages. Should be super straightforward. We're just going to go through a review of some terms, as well as the sources of drugs, and um, the basics of pharmacology. So, let's start with slide one here. Um, what is a drug? A drug is any substance that produces a change in the function of a living organism. Okay. Pharmacology is the study of drugs, including their origin, nature, properties, and effects on living organisms. So, basically, pharmacology is a pretty broad topic. Um, Within pharmacology, you could study pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, pharmacotherapy. Um, so pharmacology is just a broad overview of the study of drugs and where they came from and how they work. Um, a drug's efficacy is the study of its effectiveness. So efficacy basically means, is, is it effective? Um, you'll hear a lot of times people refer to the safety and efficacy of a drug. And the two things we want to know about a drug is, is it safe? and does it work? Is it safe? Will it harm our patients? Will it have adverse side effects that are undesirable? And is it effective? If we give this patient this drug, is it actually going to work? So moving on, pharmacognosy, which I gotta tell you, you don't ever hear that word said out in the real world, is the study of a drug's characteristics and its sources. Pharmacodynamics, so think dynamic, changing, moving, the study of what a drug does to the body, um, how it changes the body. And pharmacokinetics is the study of what the body does to a drug. How does it absorb it? How does it distribute it? How does it metabolize it? And how does it excrete it? Um, we have a little acronym for that called ADME, which is absorption distribution, metabolism, and excretion. And that is pharmacokinetics in a nutshell. That is basically what we're concerned about when we talk about pharmacokinetics. Pharmacotherapeutics is the study of the desired uses and effects of a drug. And this is a pretty big topic in the world of pharmacy. So we want to know what can the drug be used for and what's going to happen when somebody takes its drug, both good and bad, the intended effects and the adverse side effects. Um, toxicology is the study of poisons, their effects, and antidotes. Now keep in mind, um, any drug, when used to excess or inappropriately, can be considered a poison. Um, so we're not just talking poisons that you might think of, um, such as poisonous mushrooms. We're talking anything that is toxic to the body. Um, Toxicology also talks about antidotes. How can we reverse that toxicity? How can we make the patient better and get that nasty substance out of the body? So the history of drugs. Um, one of the first historical records of drugs comes from Babylonia in the form of textbooks found on clay tab tablets tracing back to 2600 BC. These tablets contained inscriptions describing symptoms of a disease, a drug formula that could be used as a remedy for the disease, compounding instructions, and a chant or spell that could be used to enhance the formula's effectiveness. We have come a long, long way since then. While a lot of what we do is still similar, such as compounding instructions and drug formulas, um, we have kind of done away, at least in Western medicine, with the chanting and etc. Some people do subscribe to different um, types of medicine, but in the pharmacy world, we are primarily concerned with medications and not so much the spiritual healing or the um, sort of medicine man-like um, intention. Um, don't get me wrong, I still think there is a lot of, a lot to be said for the power of positive thinking, um, spiritual well-being, yoga, meditation, what have you. But here we're going to focus on um, tangible substances called medications. So in 1821, the first uh, school of pharmacy was founded. Um, and APHA, which is the American Pharmaceutical Association, was founded in 1852. So in the early, early years, drugs didn't have any standards. There was nobody regulating them, and there was a lot of mischief and wrongdoing going on. People making a buck or two off of selling something that they told someone else would work. Um, 
So drugs didn't have to meet specific standards before introduced, being introduced to the public. Therefore, they weren't what we considered safe and effective. In the early 1900s, we started to see drug laws developed. And today, a drug must go through rigorous testing and approval before being introduced to consumers. Um, so we again, we've come a long way. There's better laws in place now, and our hopefully our patients are being kept safer than they ever were in the previous history. So there are a variety of sources um, that can be used to make a drug. Drugs can come from plant sources, such as um, the digitalis or foxglove plant. That's the pink pretty plant you see there on your screen. Um, it is the source of digoxin, which is a medication used in heart failure. Beautiful plant, great drug. I think it's toxic to dogs, if I remember correctly. I know from the intro video, you probably saw my dog. I love this plant. I think it's awesome. It will never be in my house or my yard because it's toxic to puppies. So that would be a toxicology study. However, um, this was one of the first plants that um, was discovered to have a functional drug. Um, and some of the first drug sources were from plants, fruits, and vegetables. Further research revealed that certain extracts for animal were useful in alleviating patient symptoms or replacing missing chemicals. And what we're thinking of here specifically, take a look at the piggy on the screen. Pigs were our original source of insulin and thyroid medications. Um, these days we use um, more biochemical engineering to create those. Um, it, it leads to a little less sensitivity um, to the medication and less reactions. However, the pig was the original source. So, um, let's see. Let's animal sources. Um, mineral sources. Minerals such as silver, nitrate, and sulfur are highly purified forms of elements that are used to treat specific diseases. For example, um, a sulfonamide is a antibiotic. Um, you'll specifically hear it used in a like a sulfa, if you had, if you know someone who has a sulfa allergy, um, they're allergic to sulfonamides specifically. Um, that could happen. Sulfonamides are commonly used to treat bacterial infections of the urinary tract. Um, another example of mineral um, medication would be lithium carbonate, and that's used to treat bipolar disease. Um, synthetic forms of drugs are created in pharmaceutical laboratories, not derived from plants or animals. Um, and they're made by experimenting with different chemicals. So scientists kind of come up with an idea. They formulate what they think might be a good drug and uh, sort of put it together in a lab. Synthetic drugs are usually more economical to manufacture than those coming from natural sources because you don't have to find a thousand pigs. You don't have to find a field full of uh, foxglove to make digoxin. So usually a lot of our drugs these days are from synthetic sources. Bioengineering. Um, genetic engineering is the latest process that is used to manufacture drugs. All living structures um, have the same exact same DNA mole molecular structure consisting of six basic components, a phosphate, a sugar, and four bases. So recombinant technology takes genetic information from two different organisms and combines them together. For example, um, by removing the bacterial walls of an E. coli bacterium and combining it with the insulin gene, the drug humulin, which is a type of human insulin, insulin is made. So bioengineering is sort of um, a continuing up and coming field. Um, a lot of great things coming out of the bioengineering field. Medicinal or medical uses of drugs. So drugs can be used. Um, to be therapeutic. In other words, they are used in the treatment of a condition to relieve symptoms. For example, aspirin to relieve a headache. Diagnostic. So drugs can be used to diagnose a problem, such as, um, oh, a diagnostic drug might be barium sulfate, the one that you use in the book. Um, basically, people swallow it, and uh, it can kind of go through the body and light up different parts of the body that are possibly ulcerative or um, problematic. Um, in addition, let's see, diagnostic. Another one that comes to mind for me um, would be something called cosyntropin or cor... I, I can't remember the generic name right now. It's skipping my mind. But basically, it's injected into the patient to determine if they have an adrenal dis gland dysfunction. There's not a ton of diagnostic drugs out there, but there are several. Um, curative, a medication that helps remove an agent that causes a disease. A prime example of this would be antibiotic therapy because it can destroy bacteria and therefore do away with the infection. 
Replacement. These agents are used to replace chemicals that are deficient or missing in the human body, such as insulin, um, thyroid hormone, vitamins, and minerals. And last but not least, preventative, preventative or prophylactic, meaning to prevent. These substances are used to prevent or lessen the severity of the disease. For example, immunizations to prevent influenza or polio, or antibiotics given before surgical procedures to prevent infection. So drugs are categorized by the actions they take on the body, the change they produce in cellular activity, and the body system they affect. Um, so if we take a look at table 31 with the last couple of minutes we have here, you can kind of see different classifications of drugs. And follow right along is their indication for use, meaning what are they used for. Um, some examples of that classification of drug, as well as some examples of side effects. So every single drug out there has a side effect. I can't think of a one that doesn't have at least a side effect of headache. When they do these studies, um, they have to list side effects that people complain of, and headache is a pretty common side effect for many medications. So um, you'll see that a lot, but the ones we want to pay attention to are the ones that are really going to be problematic for our patients. One that hops right out at me in the first column there for analgesics, or the first row, is hydrocodone. A side effect of any opiate medication is constipation, and that is something that never goes away. The patient never gets used to the constipation that comes from hydrocodone. So we need to find a way to get around that, whether it's having them eat a high-fiber diet, drink tons of water, or possibly take some medication to prevent constipation. Um, we're looking to see what are the side effects, and are they tolerable to the point where the benefit of the drug outweighs the risk and the nasty side effect that comes with it. So take a minute to look through um, drug classifications, table 30.1 on 848, 849, 850, 851, 852, and 853. Basically, it's the entirety of your reading. Become familiar with these because I don't think that we go into a huge amount of detail studying different classes of drugs. Um, anytime you have a question, refer back to these. Um, if you, you know, are reading about, say, antihistamines and you want to know what they're for, come back to this table. Okay, so that covers week one. Do this week by Sunday at midnight is your week one forum discussion, that introductory discussion, your week one assignment, which is also on Moodle, and the syllabus quiz. This is very important. It does count as a grade. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me by email. My information is right in the syllabus. It's probably also in the introduction on Moodle. If not, it is L Riddle, which is R-I-D-D-L-E, at mildred-la.edu. Hope you guys have a great week. Um, we're off to a good start here, and I'll see you for week two.